Lots of questions in the prepping community revolve around gear. We like going up to people we think are experts and asking, what's the best item for XYZ? This goes beyond gear though. People start asking what's the best food to store, what's the best location to move to, and a whole slew of other questions that revolve around the word best. Videos that then tell you there's no such thing as best, even when it comes from those experts and those with first-hand knowledge, don't do as well as videos that end up becoming a paid advertisement. Preppers need to refine their thinking and get flexible, because ultimately survival revolves around who's able to adapt to changes. Instead of hyper-focusing on what the best item is, if you talk yourself through these steps, you're most likely going to find the answer that best fits your individual needs. The first order of business is to identify whether what you are requesting is a true need or want. It sounds easy enough. Is this item essential to your mission? Have you been able to live without it? Will you die if you don't move to a cabin in the woods? If something is not critical to the success of your goals or doesn't help you achieve them in a more efficient and timely manner, you can safely categorize the item, location, or action as a want. It would be nice to have. It might give you some personal satisfaction of ownership, but it didn't make your life more efficient in any way. A true need will solve a problem, cut down a two-hour job into a one-hour job, or move you closer to critical medical care that you or a loved one now needs. To top it off, everyone has a different set of needs, so you can already begin to question anyone trying to push one product as the only solution for everybody for everything. Not everyone who lives in the city needs to carry a fire steel. Not everyone in more rural areas on their own property need to worry about concealing a long gun in a high-speed $300 bag. After you've classified your request as a want or need, list all possible highly rated choices. This can be gear, a place to live, or a choice to make. Rarely is there one option to choose from. Is that the only bomb-proof bag you can buy? Is that the only durable set of work pants? Shoes, weapon, location. Also notice I specifically said highly rated. You don't want to be stuck with an item that seemed okay but had trash reviews, leading you to owning a paperweight after a week or three. You don't want to make a life-changing move to the middle of the countryside as a lifelong urbanite and you find that rural life is way more dawn to dusk work rather than lazy days on a cottage roof. That's part of your own research to do. That goes back to everyone having different individual needs. For example, there are very minor differences between the overall durability between Eagle, Tactical Tailor, or London Bridge Trading, especially when we're talking about the 1000 denier Cordura bags that they've put out. Stitching is usually overkill and tight the quality is top-notch, and the material can be so durable it starts out super stiff. All of these companies have excellent reputations in whatever niche they're filling. If they are choices that appeal to you based on rating and your determination of a need that absolutely must be taken care of, we can now move on to the last step, which is identifying the minor details that suit your personal preferences. That chest rig and ACU issued through CIF could have gone through as many engagements as some high-speed London Bridge trading rig and served the individual well. Now that soldier probably didn't have a choice to use ACU, but you do. And you just don't like looking like a gray crayon. That's fair. Maybe a company's shade of coyote tan mixed with the brown from another company are a better fit for your AO. Maybe moving to the south side is cheaper than living in Jersey. What I'm getting at is if you already have a pool of highly rated items or locations to choose from, then your choice comes down to the minor details that seal the deal for you. Usually when you've decided what will work for your situation, you'll have your question of what's better X, Y, or Z answered. So this wasn't to berate anyone, call anyone out, or just talk down to people who have questions, but it's to reinforce some solo critical thinking skills. Not every decision about everything can be spoon-fed to you. Don't select an item or place to live based on one person coming out and saying this is the answer to your problems, this is so cool, this is the end-all be-all situation. Great, it worked for that person, will it work for you? You need to be able to identify your own individual needs, your own preferences, and if you pick from high quality choices, you will usually answer your own question. If everyone did that, it would leave lots of comment sections of gear-focused channels a little drier, but lots of things I see are questions a person can only really answer for themselves. With enough research, chances are your question has already been asked in the gear and prepper realm. Go from there and free each other's time. Don't sweat the small stuff, and remember, this is all just stuff in the end. If you don't have the skills that make you a useful part of a larger community, then the concept of survival, whether it's an emergency or day-to-day, it's just going to be rough no matter how you cut it. I hope this helps you streamline your decision making so that you can start focusing on what matters the most. Until the next video, be good, stay safe, and have a good one.